Griffin Hammond is a New York City-based documentary filmmaker. He's well known for his YouTube channel, where he posts dozens of tutorials for independent filmmakers. And, more recently, his award-winning documentary, Sriracha. It's kind of funny because, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's hot sauce, right? But I've become pretty obsessed with it. It's absolutely iconic, and I think it's completely unintentional, too. Three very distinct syllables. See, I just love that bold flavor. Oh. <laughs> it's yummy. Almost everyone loves my partner. It has this cult following. I feel very proud. Thank you for making the world's greatest sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Griffin, welcome to Australia. Thank you. What brings you down under? Well, I'm doing a, a series of workshops for Panasonic about the, their new camera, the GH5. I'm also here at SIMPTI, the broadcasting conference. Cool, yeah. yeah. How did you get started? Well, I was on YouTube like a normal person, but then I actually got a job at YouTube. Okay. So that helped. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> yeah. But I, I ran a channel for a long time called Indie Mogul, All right. where I made tutorial videos about filmmaking. And after I did that, naturally a lot of those people came and followed me to my personal channel, where I still do that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, of course. And filmmaking, and documentary filmmaking in particular, is your thing. Yeah. What drew you towards that? Well, I like to learn a lot. I like to grow as a filmmaker, and I've, at some point along the way, I decided I need to share what I'm learning, otherwise it's kind of wasted on just me. <laughs> and also, you can learn a lot more by forcing yourself to teach it. That's true. Yeah, and I think that YouTube benefits from tutorial videos. I mean, people go to YouTube to learn, yep. and so I've, I think that's how I've found an audience, because people appreciate that kind of content. They do. Now, you've been using the Panasonic range for quite some time. Yeah. So how did you get started with all this, with Panasonic? Well, I bought the GH1, yep. the Lumix GH1, in 2010, just because back then I was trying to make the jump to high-definition video, and it was the cheapest way to do it. I could get a, a body, a lens, a microphone, an audio recorder for like half what it would cost to get a HD camcorder. And so I did that just to save money, but I liked the camera. I was getting high quality stuff out of it. Got the GH2, the GH3, the GH4. Yeah. <laughs> camera and then, on the 5? <laughs> yeah. Well, and before I got to the 5, Panasonic noticed that I've been making all these tutorial we videos. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> and they asked me if I wanted to have the GH5 before anyone. <laughs> so you got to review it? More than that, I got to spend a lot of time with it. I shot a short film called Hand Cut, just awesome. like a little short documentary with it and uh, I get to be the global brand ambassador for it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's a camera I use almost every day for professional projects, and it has every tool I need. I mean, I already liked the GH4. Yep. Like the GH4, so it it's just shoots... an easy transition to... Yeah. yeah. I mean, it shoots 4K, but now it does it in 60 frames per second. They added in-body image stabilization. They added a lot of cool features. So Hank, that's your latest project yeah. in New York City. Tell us about this. I don't know if they have this here, like the super crystal clear ice in cocktails. No, it's, it's only a New York City thing. <laughs> very popular in New York. And I was just curious, like, how do they do that? How do they get it so nice and perfectly clear? So I made a film about these ice makers in New York and cocktail bars. And I shot it in 4K 60p, because that's something the GH5 can do. And you could shoot 60 to go slow motion, but I actually shot in 60 frames to deliver in, that's the output format. But the, the consequence was that I'm shooting with half as much light, because I'm shooting with double the frames that I normally would, and I'm shooting in dark bars. So it's already really low light situation. You can't ask to turn the lights off. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I just, I used my most powerful primes. I used a 42.5 F12, and I used a 12 millimeter F14 and never needed to go above like 1600 ISO, it looked great. Well, it is just a camera that works well for my style, and I think the biggest thing is probably the size, just that it's lightweight yes. compared to some of their larger camcorders and cinema cameras. I just find that when I show up with a small amount of gear, one, it doesn't kill my back, mm -hmm. But I'm able to get access that I might not otherwise. Like, I'm able to walk onto red carpet events yeah. and no one knows that I have a professional <laughs> camera. Well, they will now yeah. when they watch this. <laughs>